Now we have Legless, Aragorn, and Gimli. Tolkien has divided the fellowship, broken them up, so that we're going to get several different narrative strands. And in various chapters, he's going to come back to one group of people, and we'll follow them for a while. And then in another, we'll follow another group of people. So here we are with Merry and Pippin. And they go into Fangorn, escape from the orcs, and they climb up this little mound or, or cliff. And on page 463, Mary says, the wind's changing. It's turned east again. It feels cool up here. And Pippin says, I'm afraid this is only a passing gleam. It will, it will all go gray again. What a pity. The shaggy old forest looked so different in the sunlight. I almost felt I liked the place. Because on the eaves of the forest, it's very dark and, and brooding and foreboding. And they get up in, onto this clearing, and Pippin says, you know, I, I feel more comfortable here. I almost felt I liked the place. And they hear a voice, almost felt you liked the forest? That's good. That's uncommonly kind of you. Well, the reason I do the voice that way is because Tolkien has, tells us in one of his letters that he imagined his friend C.S. Lewis as kind of the model for Treebeard, and Lewis had a booming voice. So Treebeard dis uh, discovers them. Notice it's not at all like in the film version. And they go on and they talk about Gandalf, and they tell Treebeard that Gandalf is dead, that he's fallen out of the story. And Treebeard takes them off to one of his homes. And on page 473, after they've talked for a bit, Treebeard's talking about Saruman and says he is plotting to become a power. He has a mind of metal and wheels, and he does not care for growing things, except as far as they serve him for the moment. And he wonders about Saruman's orcs and wonders, are they some further twisting of the orc kind, or as Saruman bred orcs with men, which he says would be a truly evil thing to do. So we see the Ent moot, and at the end of that chapter, the Ents decided to march off to Isengard, and we end that chapter with the Ents and Merry and Pippin looking down on the Vale of Isengard. And that takes us to chapter 5, The White Rider. Legolas, Aragorn, and Gimli make their way slowly into Fangorn. They know Fangorn is dangerous because Celeborn told them it was. And on page 491, Legolas says, It is old, very old, so old that almost I feel young again, as I have not felt since I journeyed with you children. Now, Legolas is a young wood elf, and yet he refers to Aragorn and Gimli as children, and we know from the appendices, Aragorn is about 87 years old at this point. We don't know, I've not checked in the appendices recently, how old Legolas is, but the implication is that he's several hundred years old. Okay. And Gimli, in response to Legolas, says, you know, your, your words make me feel more comfortable. You comfort me. Page middle of 491. Where you go, I will go. That's a quotation from the Old Testament. That's Ruth saying to Naomi, Whither thou goest, I will go. Okay. Now this is an indication of how close-knit the friendship is becoming between Legolas and Gimli. So they make their way into the forest, and they see an old man. And Gimli warns the others. And tells Legolas, the bottom of 492, Your bow, Legolas, bend it, get ready, it is Saruman. Do not let him speak. Okay. But Legolas doesn't lose his bow. And Aragorn says, Legolas is right. We may not shoot an old man so at unawares and unchallenged, whatever fear or doubt be on us. Echoing what Gandalf told, told Frodo back at the beginning. Okay. So... They go on and speak, and the old man jumps up above them, page 494. They see his clothing underneath his gray cloak, and now he's all in white. And Gimli yells, Saruman! And we're told in this beautiful passage, the bottom of 494, 
The old man was too quick for him. He sprang to his feet and leaped to the top of a large rock. There he stood, grown suddenly tall, towering above them. His hood and his gray rags were flung away, his white garments shone. He lifted up his staff, and Gimli's axe leaped from his grasp and fell ringing on the ground. The sword of Aragorn, stiff in his motionless hand, blazed with a sudden fire. Legless gave a great shout and shot an arrow high into the air. It vanished in a flash of flame. Mithrandir! Mithrandir! Well met, I say to you again, Legolas. And at last, Aragorn speaks. Gandalf! Beyond all hope, you catastrophe! Beyond all hope, you return to us in our need. What veil was over my sight, Gandalf? Again, when saying what veil was over my sight, Aragorn is saying, or suggesting, even I have need of recovery. Even I don't see as clearly as I ought to see. And Gandalf says, yeah, yeah, Gandalf, that was my name. And Gimli says, but you're all in white. And Gandalf replies, yes, I am white now. Notice Gimli's words. You are all in white. Notice the preposition, in white, as if he's only clothed in whiteness. And Gandalf says, yes, I am white now, not clothed in white. Okay, why? What's the distinction I'm drawing? Remember the conversation Gandalf had with Saruman, where Gandalf refers to him as Saruman the White, and Saruman says, I am Saruman of many colors. And Gandalf says, I like white better. And Saruman says, the white page can be overwritten, the white cloth can be dyed, and the white light can be broken. And Gandalf says, he would destroy a thing to find out what it is has left the path of wisdom. When Gandalf says, I am white now, he means I am no longer a fragment of white, as when he was Gandalf the Grey. He is now the whole thing. He is whole. He is pure. Okay? He's no longer fragmented. He's now entire. I am, sir, a man, one might almost say, as he should have been. Okay? <coughs> and so they talk. <coughs> and they talk about what is going on with Mary and Pippin. They talk about Frodo and Sam some. They talk about the Ents on page 499. And Aragorn says, the Ents... Then there is truth in the old legends about the dwellers in the deep forest and the giant shepherds of the trees. If anybody, Aragorn should realize, legends are not to be discounted. I mean, Aragorn is a living legend to Amir. Are there still ints in the world? I thought that they were only a memory of ancient days. If indeed they were ever more than a legend of Rowan, he acknowledges maybe they were real thousands of years ago, but then again, maybe they were only a wives' tale of Rowan. Legolas, a legend of Rowan? Nay, every elf in Wilderland has sung songs of the old Onodrim. Okay. If I were to meet one still walking in this world, then indeed I should feel young again. Again, notice Legolas, who is a young wood elf, feels old. Elves don't get more life with each passing day. Life just becomes more strained. And Gandalf talks about Treebeard and says, Treebeard is Fangorn. The forest is named after him because he was the first. He is the oldest of the Ents, the oldest living thing that still walks beneath the sun upon this Middle Earth. Now, is that a contradiction with what we've heard about Tom Bombadil, who is called the eldest? Oldest of the old? Or is there a distinction made here in that Treebeard is described as the oldest living thing <coughs> that still walks beneath the sun upon this Middle Earth? Is it possible that Tom Bombadil doesn't merely walk beneath the sun on this Middle Earth? Maybe he's a little more than that. They go on and they keep talking. And Aragorn says to Gandalf, page 501, do I, not say, do I not say truly, Gandalf, that you could go whithersoever you wish quicker than I, 
And this I also see.